Hey, I'm Trey. As a detective, I realize that we walk around every day being watched by someone. Not all of those people watching have good intentions because some of them so happen to be serial killers. If you're into real stories about how some victims were chosen by serial killers, then this is the channel for you. So hit that button so you can be reminded of new content that I upload every Tuesday and Thursday. Please leave any comments or suggestions in the comment section because I'm always interested in your opinions. Well, if you're ready, let's get started. 1803, in the country of France, Helen Gigado was born. Helen also had a sister whose name was not provided. At age seven, her mother died abruptly, so Helen and her sister were sent to live with her aunt whose name was not provided. It was alleged but not confirmed that she was completely grief-stricken, but more than that, it took an emotional toll on her. Associates of hers would also go on to say that she was never the same after her mother's death. Helen's aunt was a caretaker by trade. As a child, she worked side by side with her aunt and learned everything there was to learn in regards to being an efficient caretaker. Eventually, Helen became an adult and continued to work alongside of her aunt as a caretaker for a large, wealthy family. Helen became an exceptional cook, which earned her a full-time position with that employer. For some time, everything went fine working for the employer until an incident took place. The employer requested that Helen make some soup for the family. Somehow or another, after she finished cooking the soup, her employer saw something strange floating in the soup. It looked like an unidentified new ingredient was added. The employer was very familiar with what belonged in the soup because it had been prepared before. It was determined that hemp was mixed in the soup. Hemp is used for various items such as making clothes, paper, rope, and also for medicinal purposes. It basically makes you feel high when you consume it. Shortly after that incident, Helen was forced to find a new job as a cook for another family. The new employer's name was Francois Le Drago. He happened to be a priest as a profession. He had a family of seven, including himself, that she would need to prepare meals for. She started her position as cook during the early part of 1833. Everything went great for several months. She did her job exceptionally well and she got close with the family. Several months had passed and by June, three of the family members had become violently ill. They each complained of being lethargic along with stomach aches, severe vomiting, and excessive diarrhea. A physician was summoned to their home to render medical attention but they eventually all died. Just so happened around that time there was a major outbreak of cholera in the country. Cholera is typically transmitted from drinking tainted water or contaminated food. In most cases people survive it but in some cases it can be deadly. Medical science had not progressed enough to determine the cause of deaths but the symptoms resembled a lot like someone suffering from cholera. So the deaths were just labeled as natural causes. Helen fell into uncontrollable grief it was alleged that she was extremely emotional, so much in fact that at times she was unconsolable. Since she was considered part of the family, they all embraced her and attempted to console one another. Over the next several months, the remaining family members, in their own time frames, they all eventually fell prey to feeling lethargic, violent vomiting, diarrhea, and stomach pains. In each case, the physician was contacted, responded, and could only supply medicine that could ease the symptoms but not cure the sickness. By October of the same year, which is a span of four months, the entire family of seven members had been wiped out due to the sickness. Wow, if an entire family dying off was considered as normal, I'm sure glad I was never born back then. Now that Helen was out of a job and a home, she decided to return to her previous job working with her aunt. Helen returned to the village where her aunt worked and found that her sister was also working for the same employer. Over the next several months, Helen's aunt and two other women fell sick. Helen attempted to nurse each one of the women back to health, but ultimately each one of them died. Helen became uncontrollable with grief and found it difficult to work. Now that she was homeless again, Helen met a woman by the name of Marie Lubacher. Marie lived alone with her two small children, which were son and daughter. She allowed Helen to move in, believing that they can help one another. Helen was a good cook and her skills would help Marie with taking care of the children in return. Helen would have a place to stay until she got on her feet. Helen got along really well with the family. 
Not too long after Helen moved in with the family, Maria and her daughter became sick. They exhibited the same symptoms as all the others. Again, the doctor was summoned and it was diagnosed as cholera. Both Marie and her daughter died, but the son survived. Now that Helen found herself homeless again, she received an offer from a widow only known as Lori. Lori requested that Helen move into one of her available bedrooms and she could do the cooking for her in lieu of payment. Helen accepted the offer. The widow enjoyed eating the soup that Helen prepared and Lori provided much praise amongst her friends and neighbors about Helen's cooking. Shortly after Helen moving in, Lori died unexpectedly. Due to the praise that Helen received from Lori prior to her death, she was offered another job by another woman by the name of Madame Toussaint. While working for her employer, four more people died abruptly with the same symptoms in the same manner. Shortly after, Helen was fired due to an unrelated incident involving the theft. Helen had become a transient to a degree. She moved from home to home working at each place as a cook, but only for a short stay. At least one person at each location that she cooked for died unexpectedly. Although Helen was never suspected of contributing to any of the deaths at that point, each of her employers fired her due to theft. It was believed that she was a kleptomaniac. Helen continued to get hired at new locations and then fired between the years of 1841 and 1849 for the same reason. In 1850, Helen got a job working for a well-known attorney and politician by the name of Theophil Bidard. While working for her employer, several people had died of the same symptoms as the previous victims. It was a servant by the name of Rose Tessier and a maid by the name of Rosaline Sarazen. Before Rosaline passed, the doctor arrived and attempted to vigorously save her life to no avail. The doctor found her death suspicious and her symptoms were a lot similar to someone that was suffering from arsenic poison. He then suggested that an autopsy be completed on Rosaline. Helen immediately cried out that her death was not her fault. Prior to her statement, no one implicated her in any wrongdoing. This reaction immediately caused everyone to turn their attention towards Helen. An autopsy was completed on Rosaline's and Rose's death at the time, and it was determined that they both died of arsenic poison. The authorities were summoned and an investigation was completed. The investigators retraced most of Helen's previous employers. Not all of the bodies were exhumed, but a lot of the ones that were found did have high traces of arsenic in their bodies. It was determined that she was more than likely responsible for at least 23 murders, but the death count could go as high as 36 in total. Helen was immediately arrested and she was charged for four murders with 11 attempted murders. Also, due to French law, there was a statute of limitations for all the previous homicides which prevented her from being charged with any additional killings. Helen's attorney put up a good legal defense, but ultimately she was found guilty. She was sentenced to death in 1852 and was executed by guillotine. If you enjoy more stories such as these, click on one of the suggested videos above. Also, please leave your suggestions in the comment section because I'm always interested in your opinions. God bless and stay safe.